Hey, I'm Srini, host and founder of the Unmistakable Creative Podcast and the creator of Maximize Your Output with Mem. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Mem as a replacement for email. So why would you wanna do that? There's almost nothing that causes us to context shift as much as emailing. You probably have those days where you're looking for something or somebody's trying to communicate with you and you're having an ongoing conversation that's taking place in your inbox and you can't close your email client because you have to keep an eye on your inbox to see what they're going to say next or whatever resource they're going to send you that you need. And in this video, I'm gonna show you three different ways that you can use Mem as a replacement for email. And if you wanna learn how to take notes that you can use to create content, to move your projects forward, be sure to check out our free course on how to take smart notes. I'll include a link in the description below. Now, let's get to the video. So what I wanna show you are three different ways that you can use Mem as a replacement for email. Now, obviously we can't send emails from, but we can receive them and we can actually share Mem. So I'm gonna go into all three of those ways. The first is probably the most obvious one that you have thought of when you first discover Mem, which is setting up your email so that you can actually forward emails to Mem. So that's pretty simple. All you go and do is click on the flows, go to send emails to Mem, and you can add your various Gmail accounts. So you can see here that I have Gmail accounts or Google Apps accounts that are tied to my custom domain. I don't believe that this currently works with email providers like Outlook or anything else. So you definitely will need a Google Apps account of some sort or a Gmail account. So that's the first way. So I'm gonna show you what happens when we do that. And this is the most obvious one. So you can see here, I have this email from my accountant. So let's say that I wanna get it out of my inbox, but I wanna make sure that I remember it. Pretty soon it will actually show up here in my inbox in Mem. And if you give it just a second, it'll pop up here. So what you'll notice here also is there's a slight delay between when you send it from your email provider to when it lands in Mem. And that's primarily because it takes time for the email provider to send it. It's actually not really a thing inside of Mem. So you should see it here in just a second. You can see here a message popped up that says message forwarded and probably we'll either see it in our timeline or my inbox. And there you go, you can see it right there. So now I have this really important email from my accountant and I don't have to go back to my inbox to remember. So that's the first and most obvious way to forward emails to Mem. Another way that you can use Mem as a replacement for email is by forcing people to share Mems with you instead of sending emails. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example here I did a webinar recently with Natalie Marie Collins about how to use your knowledge to create content. And what you can see here is that Natalie and I never once had any conversations via email except to start planning the webinar. And then the rest of it all took place inside of here. And this is something that I realized when I had been telling students in the Maximize Your Output course to send me an email if they had any questions, which I realized was the height of stupidity for the guy who teaches the course. And so I started really thinking, okay, how do I reduce the amount of time that I'm spending in my inbox and get more and more of this information specifically from email into Mem? So what I started doing was I started asking people to not send me emails, but to share a Mem with me whenever they had a question. So if anybody is using Mem, it really doesn't make any sense to communicate with them via email because you're just basically adding another layer to your ability to communicate with them. So you can see here that if I go look at my friend, Michelle Florendo, I have a project that I'm working on with her. And so anytime she wants to talk to me about the project, I just receive a email in my inbox. Or if I wanted to, I could send a note to her and I could say, hey, Michelle, this is something that I'm working on. on a video about how to use mem as a replacement for email. This is just an example, so you can delete this message. And if I go here and I share this with Michelle, 
this will actually show up in her inbox as a message. And so she won't have to communicate with me via email. So that's one other way that you can do this. But the most, so the third way is probably the most complicated to use, but also the most effective. So let's talk about how to do that. So one of the things that I frequently receive are different emails from our ad operations team at our company, ACAST, that does all of our ad support. So you can see here, they've sent me this briefing on Kia. And normally what I have to do is go back and forth with them via email and answer all these different kind of questions that they have. And I started thinking about how I could make this process of communicating with them more efficient because often all I'm doing is sending them ads and basically they send me the request for a new advertiser's ad read for the podcast. And then I have to send it to them via email, which I realized was really inefficient and causing me to context shift a lot. What we're going to do is we're going to create a zap that automates the process of sending emails from a particular domain to men. In this case, we're going to do our trigger app is going to be Gmail. And in this case, we are going to use new email matching search criteria. And in this case, your search criteria are going to be the domain name, or in my case, they're going to be the do domain name acast.com. And I'm going to use personal at unmistakablemedia.com because that's the address that everything gets sent to. And also you want to be careful to make sure that you put in this filter, for example, which is in inbox. Otherwise, even the emails you send will end up back in your inbox in mem. And so what you want um, basically is in the inbox and then at acast.com in this case to be set up as your search criteria. We're going to refresh fields. We're going to continue. And we're going to go ahead and test the trigger. And you can see that it found a email in here. Now, one other important thing here is that you have to actually convert the content from the email, the body from HTML to Markdown because of the fact that Mem uses Markdown, otherwise it will get mangled. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a formatting filter and we're going to format text here. What we're going to say is that we want to convert HTML to Markdown. And then it's going to ask us to choose what input we want to convert. And in this case, we're going to choose body HTML as the input that we want to convert. And we're going to go ahead and test that really quick to make sure it converted properly. And now we can continue. And then what we're going to do is we are going to create a mem. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is select create mem. And then we choose our mem account. In this case, it's going to be mem number two, which is my primary mem account. And then we're going to set up our action. So what I like to do here is I like to use the subject line as the H1 tag, or at least make it bold so that it comes to mem. You can use either an H1 or H2 tag. So that way, when it shows up in the inbox, it shows up the way you want it to. Now, the other thing we're going to do is we're not actually going to pick the data from here, but we're going to look at the text that came in as output because this has been converted into Markdown. Now, the thing you want to make sure you do also is to put a space between here and here. In fact, just to be on the safe side, we're going to put up a space right there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a map from everything that they put into this email. So now what we're going to do is we're going to retest this just to make sure that it shows up in the inbox in mem. And you can see here, it says a mem was sent to the inbox just a second ago. And if you give it just a second, it will actually show up here. And what you'll notice here is that now you have a filter set up so that any email from acast.com will actually get sent to mem. Now, sometimes this takes a little bit of time to show up here in the inbox. You might have to test it once or twice just to make sure it's working properly. But then once it shows up, you now have any emails from that sender coming directly into mem. Now, I already tested this once. So you can see here that this is already inside of my inbox beforehand. And that email that I had set up inside of the zap now shows up 
inside of mem as a mem in my inbox. So now, rather than having to check my email at ACAST uh, at my personal automisticablemedia.com account every single time the team at ACAST sends me an email, I can just have all their emails forwarded to mem. So that's how you set up the zap. In this final part of the video, I'm going to show you a third method for using mem as a replacement for email, which is by sharing mems with people who may not necessarily be using mems. And what we're going to do in this case is I'm just going to pull up an old ad read from one of our sponsors. And you can see here, this has a couple of different things here. It has talking points. It has a couple of attachments. Now, one thing that's actually really cool is if you, for example, wanted to have somebody just be able to open the attachment as a link, if you say, click here to open the attachment, and then you say, you link it. And in this case, I'm just going to use maximizeyouroutput.com. When they receive this in their inbox, this will actually show up as a button that they can click. So now what we're going to do is you can see here that I have stringyourout.gmail.com open. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just share this mem with stringyourout.gmail.com. And what you'll see here is that I will receive that mem as an email. And there it is. And the great thing about this is because they have everything right here, they actually don't even have to open the mem. So now I'm going to copy and paste this link. And you'll see here that they are able to access this mem as a guest. And even though they're accessing it as a guest, they can actually see the attachment here that I shared with them. And so then they're able to open up those attachments or download those files. So for example, if I have an ad read that I've recorded and I want to share it with the team at ACAST, rather than having to go back to my inbox, I can just record the ad read and I can share it as a mem and they will receive it in their inbox and be able to download it without ever having to force me to get out of email. So that's the beautiful thing about using mem as a replacement for email. You can actually reduce your context shifting pretty dramatically. And you can do this without having other people needing to be users of them and still give them the information they need when you want to communicate with them via email. So this will take a little bit of practice. And email is not the only app that you can do this with, but I just happened to choose email because I thought it was the most obvious example where we tend to spend a lot of time context shifting. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below.